What is going on there guys? Kempi here. I am back today on this wonderful Sunday. Sounding better, feeling better. Not 100%, but I'd say we are now 90% there. We are pretty much back to full fighting form. Thank you guys so much for sticking by me Why I sounded like a poor Delia Smith. But I'm back. Kempi XI is back and the voice is finally recovered. So thank you guys very much for all your support. All the likes, all the get well soons, all the comments on how your saves are going. They've kept me busy. They've kept me doing well as well. And I'm very, very happy to say episode 5 is back today. If you can, keep smashing that subscribe button as well. It helps me out massively. And today, things have actually got a little bit interesting. You can tell from the thumbnail. And if you follow me on Twitter, something happened with Paul Mullin. Paul Mullin picked up a six-week injury and was injured for a long old time. He's been out for four weeks currently. He managed to come back, uh, come on for 10 minutes in the last game. Um, but fixtures have taken a turn for the worst. So last time we were here was the abysmal loss to Yeovil. We managed to win three games after that, all just by the one goal. A 3-2 win against Scunthorpe, a 1-0 against Wealdstone, and a 2-1 against Aldershot before we played against Bromley. And our 16-game winning streak was finally put to an end. Lee Camp was in goal for Bromley, and oh my god, he was unbelievable. We had 26 shots in this game, and he was saving absolutely everything. We followed that up with a loss 2-1 to York, and I've just played the game against Eastleigh and a one all draw there as well. But today, we have got Chesterfield, who are sitting third in the league. We are now only five points clear at top. Solihull Moors winning every single game at the moment as well. So they're right up there with us. Chesterfield 11 points behind. And they've got a bagsman of their own up front in Shimanga, who is now joint on goals with Paul Mullen on 19. And Max McMillan from Barnet is now top goal scorer on 20. You can see Oli Palmer has been carrying on playing well. But it's not the same without Paul Mullen up front with him. And Elliot Lee just isn't the same. His stats are decent for this level. He's obviously a very good player. Um, formerly of West Ham. Had last season at Charlton. But he's nothing compared to Paul Mullen. And Paul Mullen is actually now wanted by Aberdeen as well. And if they come calling, it is going to be difficult to keep Paul Mullen with us. But I will try my absolute hardest. I want to keep Jordan Davies, Paul Mullen, Oli Palmer and Aaron Hayden with the club for as long as we can go. And as well, uh, Rob Layton. Uh, I have offered Rob a two-year contract. Uh, he took a £300 wage cut. Um, and he, uh, I wanted to keep him as a coach and as a backup. So when he reaches 35, 36, maybe he'll retire and we can keep him on board as well. I think as a backup keeper, he is more than good enough. Hopefully he'll be around for years and years to come. We've also had some very, uh, very, very exciting news come through today and that is our youth intake preview first year five stars excellent intake and a in goalkeeper center back center mid wingers strikers and they are the whole central part of the field and wingers has been covered uh, a c in full backs and then defensive midfielders wide midfielders attack midfielders and wing backs have got nothing but the important areas are all five stars obviously these are all relative to our league so as we fly up the league some of these boys might quite not make it but maybe at the start of this save, leading up into League 2 and League 1, we can get a few absolute heroes from this youth intake. Today, we're going to have the game against Chesterfield in the league and then in the Fat Cup against Gorston. Uh, hopefully, we can win the Fat Cup. It'll be good. Last season, obviously, on the documentary, they did, in fact, lose in the final. So, it'll be great to put right the wrongs of last season and win that this year. Let's get into both games and, most importantly, this huge league game against Chesterfield. Right then, your Wrexham team today is Hilton, Lavenier, Hayden, Dimitri McFadden, Miller, O'Connor, Haygarth, Davies, Lee and Palmer. And the Chesterfield side is Brooks, Sheckleford, Williams, Grimes, Cololo, uh, Akinola, Banks, Mandeville, Clark, Cooper and Asante. So no Shimanga up front for Chesterfield, which is interesting and a let off for us as he is a bagsman. And obviously no Paul Mullen in the starting lineup either. He is fit enough for the bench, so hopefully you should be able to get... Half hour, 45 minutes, which would be fantastic. I'm going to get these games back onto key highlights and show you guys some of the big, big moments in this game against Chesterfield. Right, a call and then just four minutes in. O'Connor with the ball in. Palmer at the front post. Decent save from Books. The rebound forms to Palmer and it is just over the bar. 
Good start and a good start for Oli Palmer as well. He loves that near post. He loves the far post. Anything with that big head of his, he seems to be able to get on the end of. Uh, Lavanier then taking a free kick just 30 yards out. We're going to build up nicely here with Aaron Hayden. Finds O'Connor. Miller with a run inside. Finds Palmer. Ball behind to Elliot Lee who rounds the keeper and puts it past 4-1-0. And a fantastic start for Wrexham. 14 minutes in then. Elliot Lee 1-0. Oli Palmer doing very well with that hold up as well. A fantastic run from Kirk Miller. Binding Palmer with a rebound. Ball through. Finds Lee. Puts it past the keeper. And 1 0. 14 minutes in. That is exactly what we needed here today at the race course. It looks like a free kick from Kirk Miller. He is so, so good at these. 2 0. Kirk Miller. I knew it. The amount of free kicks this guy scored. There was one that I showed you the other day in about 30 yards. Swished it into the top corner in of the post. He is a free kick specialist. And I implore you guys, get a corner specialist. Get a free kick specialist. They are so handy down at this level. There he is then. The man, Jordan Davies. The Wrexham boy through and through. It's shocking from the keeper. And Palmer has been bowled over there by their centre half. He's going to be the man to take the penalty as well. Not quite sure what the Chesterfield man was doing. But it results in a Palmer goal. And 3-0 up. I thought this game was going to be much, much more difficult. Hopefully, then, we have two games today full of goals here at Chesterfield and against Galston as well. I want 10 goals between the two games, and Paul Munnan is going to get a hatty. I just, can just feel it against Galston. He's going to come back, and he's going to score all of the goals in the Fat Cup. Long ball forward, then, from Minna is met from Williams. Hayden with a clearance. Jordan Davies, again, clearing the ball. We are sat quite uh, deep, as you can see, these flat backs of four, uh, making a Hayden with a clearance again. Kirk Miller is going to put some pressure on on Kokolo. We can try and box him in now, a little bit of pressure. Banks is going to have to get out. He does find Grimes again. We have stepped up into a fairly high line. You can see from that back four, the way this formation works, uh, the DM O'Connor often follows any runners. The wingers stay quite high up. It's almost like a 4 triple 2 uh, and the two centre-mids will drop in, but Haygarth has given it a little bit more licence. Uh, Lavanier there does miss the header, and it falls into a Santi in the box. He puts it just wide. Uh, Lavanier, someone I'm very interested in trying to get on loan again next season. Um, and then try and sign him in, hopefully, League One. Uh, he's been very good for this this season. Uh, he's very quick. I like him a lot. Uh, he's a bit expensive right now. But if we can get him in next season, I'll be very, very happy. Now, Palmer is getting a little bit tired out there. He has played every single game. So there's no doubt in my mind he needs to come off at some point. And hopefully it's for that man, Paul Mullen. That's what we've done then. Oli Palmer has come off and Paul Mullen has come on for half an hour. Elliot Lee and Mullen. Right, sorry about that, guys. I was having a bit of a cough and sneeze again. Uh, and they scored. Uh, Elliot Lee was trying to bring the ball out. Well won back from Chesterfield. Ball over the top to Dobra. And not great goalkeeping there from Jack Hilton. Making it 3-1 and a goal for Chesterfield. Uh, didn't like to see that from Lee. Losing possession. Uh, he wants to stay on the field. Just onside from Dobra. Sad to see a goal go in. We are going to drop that back line just a tiny bit. Uh, no need to keep it too high up. We might as well go into a low block system. Slow down the tempo. Time waste a little bit. It's half hour to go. But this game should be nice and wrapped up. But they have brought on the danger man, Shimanga. Another player coming on is going to be new signing, Jack Keeney. He was brought in as a free transfer from Ireland. Um, he's a decent little player. Uh, to be fair, he's not been very good at centre-back, but he's a centre-back, more of a centre-mid. Uh, but the back line being so, so tired, he's going to come on in that centre-back role. A convincing 3-1 win, and I'm very, very happy with that. I'm sure the boys are too. Let's go ahead and absolutely smash Galston in the Fat Cup. We need seven goals to reach by 10, so let's go for it. A much, much rotated side today then, and Paul Mullin returns to the starting lineup with... The captain's armband on his arm. Him and Sam Dolby are going to lead the line. A rotated midfield of Mendy, Young, Hotty, and Adeji Hersey. And the defence of Callum McFadden, Ben Tozer, new signing Jack Keeney, Bryce Hosanna, and Rob Langton goes in goal. Galston are a team in the Eastman Leagues. I believe they're in the 7th or 8th tier of English football. So it should be a nice, easy win today here at the race course. It'll be good to get some goals under our belts. I'm going to sit back, relax, and hopefully watch an absolute battering. 
ball in then from Goulston. First highlight we've seen, maybe it's a battering of Wrexham. Uh, Stenner on the ball, plays a very weird pass back to uh, Kay Strong. A ball in behind to Congreve and Rob Layton, Mr. Safe Hands himself, gets down and catches that one. It is his first game since his uh, wrist break that happened in real life, so it's good to get Big Rob back in goal today. Like I said, he will be our backup keeper for years and years to come to hopefully eventually stay at the club as a coach. He has got the role for life if he wants it. Talking to someone with the role for life as he wants it. Mullen with the ball in. Sam Dolby with the header. 1-0 Wrexham. Good header from the youngster. Uh, played well again the other day in the FA Cup. Uh, they goal for Wrexham against Oldham in the first round. Uh, but a goal here in the Fat Cup for Sam Dolby. And that's 1-0. Big throw, Ben Tozer then whips it in. Oh, Jacob Mindy. It was a ball in it again from Paul Mullin. That is two assists to his name in 35 minutes. And Jacob Mendy on the end of it with a fantastic volley. Tozer with a throw in. Mullin taking a touch. Great cross in. Mendy beating the keeper. Keeper's got to do better, but he is very, very unprofessional. Uh, he is like a semi-pro. Not even that, he's an amateur keeper. Uh, so no surprise there. Decent header from Mendy, and that is 2-0. We're going to look to make it 3-0 here. A ball from Adeji Hersey is intercepted by their back line, and they are coming on a counter-attack. Ben Tozer is just too good and does get there. Long ball forward from Ozana finds Mullen, who wants a hat-trick of assists, and he gets it, and Sam Dolby gets his second goal of the game and second goal of the season. Four more, and we've got our seven for our ten goals in one episode. Half-time, 3-0. Two shots for them, 12 for us, a massive uh, 1.98 XG. Let's go out there and put on a show. I've just told them I'm really angry. I am very sorry. I was meant to do the uh, no pressure. <laughs> uh, they're not happy now, but I'm sure they're going to go out there, play with a bit of aggression, and prove to me they can score seven. We want four more goals in this game. It's a highlight from kickoff with Adeji Hersey. Mullen intercepts a back pass from their defender. And fizzes a ball across goal. It'll be good for Mullen to get a goal today. Get back on that score sheet after six weeks out. Uh, be good to get him back on at the horse and scoring goals. Hatchick of assists, I'm very happy with. Hatchick of goals as well, I'm superbly happy. Right, knocking the ball about nicely in at midfield. It's been quite a long highlight of absolutely nothing so far. Stuff like that, long balls forward. Stevens is going to bring it out for Goulston. A long ball forward. Toza does win the header. Finally, they are going to get the foot of the ball. And Belez is through. And a good save from Rob Layton. He wants that clean sheet on his game return from his broken wrist. Great to give it to him. And it stays as 3-0. The resulting corner whipped in by Goulston and won by Florent Hotty out for another corner. But I imagine that'll be the end of the highlight. Two subs have been made then. Anthony Ford and Jordan Tunnicliffe have also come on this game. Which means they're going to get some game minutes as well. Uh, both not very happy about their lack of... Uh, performances, but back boner for Goulston down the line and a clearance from Ford. Easily won up by the Goulston back line. We are going to take off Mullin after this highlight. Just 10 minutes to go. Be good to rest them at little legs. We don't want to break him just after coming back from that long-term injury. It's going to be Young to bring the ball forward and Dolby with a ball behind. Mullin, get a goal before you come off. He's 1-1. One one. Good save from the keeper. We'll get him off anyway and rest him up. A 9.5 rating and a standing ovation from the Wrexham crowd. Elliot Lee is coming on then. Mullen with a fantastic performance today. Three assists, showing what he can do, assisting as well as scoring. But we are not quite done. And Adeji Hersey wants to say, oh, he wants a goal. Great chance there for Hersey. Good save by the Gorston keeper. Keeping it at 3-0. We're not going to get our seven, but it is going to be a convincing victory here. Putting us through into the fourth round of the FA Trophy. A competition we do want to win and we want to take another nice trip down to Wembley and hopefully our only trip to Wembley this season. Right then, that is going to be it for today's episode. Tomorrow's episode is going to be a top of the table double header. We've got Solihull Moors back to back in the league after Christmas and on New Year's Day. Kicking off 2023, hopefully with three points. And that will be the league pretty much wrapped up if we win both of them games. That will put us on 66, 11 points clear of Solihull. who are the only team that look like catching us at all. If we do win them two games, I'll probably come back 
for youth intake day and that'll be about a good month and a half where I can just storm into the season uh, and get us right away down because I can't see us being a long season. I don't want to draw it out too much this first season. We are expected to win the league. We are 1-91 to favourites and we are looking at like following through with that. If we can get the two wins against Solihull anyway. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure to like this episode. Comment down below on how your Wrexham Sabres going. There's a lot of you going up in the playoffs. There's a lot of you doing Wrexham this season, which is fantastic and good to see the people that are following me on this journey. Make sure to let me know how yours is going. Subscribe to the channel, share this everywhere. And if you can, retweet the tweet as well. I always do them when these videos go live. So it'll be massive help to me so more and more people see this series. Thank you guys for watching and I'll speak to you all next time.